Okay, so we're a couple min minutes into it. So let's just get started. I only scheduled this for 30 minutes, so we're going to move quickly. Um, if I haven't met you yet, it's nice to meet you now. I'm Joelle. I'm the sports marketing manager at Spikeball. Um, most of my work is around competitive round net, so I would be the Spikeball Tour Series, college series, women's round net, other facets of the sport. Um, but I got into competitive round net when I was in college. So this is like a special part of round net for me. Um, so we're going to go through a lot, but if you have questions, feel free to drop it in the chat and we'll get around to that when uh, we get around to it. So to get started, um, now we have a lot of people who are newer to round net, so we can start with the basics. Round net is the name of the sport. Spike ball is the equipment manufacturer for the sport. So it's the same thing as Kleenex making tissues or chapstick making lip balm, that kind of a thing. Um, so when you're creating your club, social pages or anything like that, we would like for you to use round net. Um, Spike is okay if you want to do that. Um, and as you see in the logos, the UGA one doesn't have the spike ball logo on it, but that one from Roundnet Netherlands does. So we'd ask for you not to use any of our logos on your logos. Um, but graphics with the net or ball is totally okay. There are a lot of people who love Roundnet, and we love that. Um, a lot of play can be casual. That's great. I know a lot of us like to compete um, and have been doing it for some time, but it is important that we have events such as weekly pickup that cater to all levels of players. So for the rest of us who love to compete, uh, we've got plenty of opportunities to do that this year. We're excited about that. Um, if you're newer to College Roundnet, we have 10 sections in the US. This map isn't updated because the Central section and Great Lakes section look a little bit different but we have 10 sections in the US um, and each section will have one sectional, one in the fall and one in the spring. So that's 20 tournaments that um, are like local. And then we have college nationals in May. We are looking at May 18th and 19th um, because I think that has the fewest conflicts with uh, graduation weekends. So. If it is your graduation weekend, just shoot me a an email and I'll, I'll, see, I'll see what we can do. But May 18th and 19th is the date that I'm, I've picked as of now. Um, we have had people uh, apply to host sectionals um, and we've made good progress on that. So I'm hoping to get the schedule in your hands by the end of the month. That way you guys can plan um, your other events that you wanna do. If you are in this same meeting last year, you'd know that this slide was a doozy, but we're doing the same, same-ish thing. Uh, there's nothing super new with the format. So D1 will be played with the five team format. In the fall, you will have to have a minimum of three teams. And then in the spring and college nationals, you will have to have all five teams. Um, we will also have D2 open individual and women's individual. D2 will still be three team. So if you are unfamiliar with what the five team squad looks like, that'll be three open teams, a mixed team, and a women's team. Um, for fall sectionals, if you can only bring three teams, um, they will be playing in the open team slots. So even if you brought a men's team, a men's team, and a women's team, and that's all you brought, the women's team would have to play in the open team spot. I hope that makes sense. Um, yeah, nothing new here. It's the same as last year, which is great. Very refreshing to not have huge changes. Um, in terms of hosting events, we would like for you guys to host um, events on your own campus, apart from the sectionals. Um, so we want to figure out more ways to have people compete. If you're interested in hosting, even if it's a small tournament, we'd love to hold your hand through that whole process if you haven't hosted anything before. Um, and we do have sponsors like Protein 2O and Bad Guy, Bad Guys, Beard Guys, Bad Combo, Beard Guys, looking to send some free stuff. So if 
you see an opportunity to partner with Protein 2 or Beers Guys or Hampton Farms, let's do that. Um, they would love to be part of events that are very grassroots. Um, so even if you had like a hat tournament or a king of the court tournament, a casual mix tournament on a free Saturday, let's do that. They'd love to send you stuff um, so we can make those events bigger and better. Cade, what's up? We are hosting a campus tournament uh, end of September-ish, the weekend mm -hmm. before the championship. Can we yeah. talk about getting some of that stuff for that tournament? Yes, yes, that's great. That's exactly what we want. Um, so yeah, in my experience, I've seen a lot of good stuff when you come back to school and then have something like right away to get people kind of hyped on the, on the round net, on the competition. Um, especially like for a mixed tournament, if you guys don't have a lot of women to start, I feel like doing that right off the bat is a great way to introduce some some women into the sport. Um, so yeah, Protein Two O has a lot of free stuff, and they want to get involved in college on it. So Cade, send me an email. We'll chat about that. Mm -hmm. We would love for you to have uh, like a club website on Fuango. And if you haven't seen it yet, if you haven't been on Fuango today, we just launched like a new landing page and it's really cool. So go to Fuango.io like right now and go look at it. I love it. Um, so Fuango is a great place for you to have your whole setup. You can organize clubs, uh, organize your tournaments on there and like manage your membership. Um, so if you need help on Fuango, I'm here for that as well. Yes, I will post these slides. I just saw oh, thanks, Noah. <laughs> um, let's see, what else is up? At the end of the season, I know this is a long ways away, but we do have some awards. The All-American Squad, Cap College Athletes of the Year, Rookie of the Year, Coach of the Year. Um, and those will be for mostly the top level of college round net, but it's uh, exciting for those who compete a lot. This is Sachi. She's great. If you haven't met her yet, um, and some of the people who will be involved in choosing those award recipients will be the panel. Um, last year, I think we had 14 people on the panel. Um, they helped create the power rankings and also voted on the end of season awards. Um, so those are some fun, like content things that are going to be happening. We always love the the power rankings they stir up a lot of conversation. So if you are involved in College Roundnet and would like to be part of the panel, um, you can send an email to tournaments at spikeball.com, kind of just outlining your involvement, um, which section you're in, which school you're at, and we will start that conversation. Um, we have a college back to school sale. So this wasn't an email that I sent out a few days ago, but if you would like, to get sets and balls for cheap, we have these prices for you. Um, at that price, each pro set would be $57. Um, and the normal retail price for a pro set is $99. So if you have sets that you want to stock up on, now's the time. If you want to get balls for your club to, um, to supply you for the year, this is definitely the time for that. Um, I would love for you guys to stay connected with all of the things going on. So there are two forms, the athlete form, the leadership form. Um, you guys should have already filled out the leadership form. Um, but I would encourage you to follow Spikeball Tour Series on Instagram and uh, let your club members know as well. We have a lot of highlights and updates from the season from College Round Net that you'll want to see. Mm -mm -mm. Throughout the season, if you have questions, you can email tournaments at spikeball.com. If it's like the tiniest bit more urgent, you can email me at joelle at spikeball.com. I don't prefer it, but if you need me quickly, this is my phone number. Um, again, I, I really don't prefer it, <laughs> but this is the fastest way to get in touch with me. Um, if you have any questions, like if, the, if your sectional has some issue going on, shoot me a text or give me a call and that is the fastest way to get a response um i think that's it i actually breeze through that really quickly does anyone have any 
questions about all this stuff. That was a big dump. And there's still a lot of details that aren't on here that will be posted on our website later. Um, so if you're wondering where all that stuff is. Um, Katie, we have a, a host application. Um, so that's on the website. I can send you that link right now, actually. Um, we would like for the hosts to be in an, in an ideal like location, of course. So I looked at the Atlantic Coast section and Clemson is in like a good middle-ish spot between like Tennessee and NC State, for example. So, you know, Clemson will likely host one because people can come to the middle for that. Um, besides that, we would like for hosts to um, kind of take the lead on uh, on that whole process. So they would be in charge of booking the fields, um, but we would send the equipment um, to make that all happen. So location is a big deal for us. If you haven't hosted before, that is okay. Again, we're really good about holding your hand through it and leading you through the whole thing because I know tournaments are a lot happening at once. Okay, there is a hosting slide that I have. Here we go. This is the whole breakdown. Spikeball will create the event pages. We have the season graphics that will be made. Um, we will post it on our socials and supply the net and balls. We take 30% of the registration fees, but then 70% will go back to the tournament hosts. I know that's a great way to support you guys and your travel, uh, especially to college nationals, um, because I know that's a big thing. So, yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, there's a lot of things. Okay, let's see. Malachi, I see your question. I have an intern incoming, actually, and we have um, a lot of resources that we'll be making, but we also have Aiden Mackey from GCU who just posted a bunch of videos on, uh, on those, that question that you have. Um, if there are any girls that have input on the question, um, about, like, what works for recruiting and retaining women, uh, feel free to chip in, or for, to chime in. Nate. Nate, I have some testimonials that will be on the five team format page, but if anyone has any input on how you saw five team working for you this past season, feel free to, to say something as well. Mm -mm -mm. And then Nick, if you shoot me an email at joel at spikeball.com, we'll make that order happen for you. That's like a, like a little bit of a manual process. But does anyone have any other questions for me? Oh, Julian, I think you raised your hand. Um, does anyone have any, anything that worked for them this year for recruiting women that worked for y'all? I have some uh like testimonials that i'll put on the five team we uh web page so those will be on there too mammoth there are no more left so when we get a new batch of those i can keep y'all updated thanks no i can keep you guys updated on that but we currently don't have any more of the mammoth sets to sell yeah I know. That's crazy. <laughs> There's a lot of those guys, but <laughs> Kay, do you have anything that worked for you at Clemson for uh recruiting women? I know you you had some already, but was there anything that you noticed that can help some other squads, some other schools? Yeah, I think a big one with just all new players in general was making it making our club less a about the competition when you got involved. I think it's scary for a lot of people to play a sport and try to include them in the highest level of college competition possible super early. And so a big one for us was just 
having a lot of casual fun at pickup in the fall and having a lot of casual events and sort of stuff that was approachable for anybody to come to and um, and by kind of building off of that we were very fortunate to have a group of girls that it's almost turned into a cult almost at our club where it was like the girls wouldn't guys would be like hey do you want to do you want to play and they'd be like no we're playing with each other why why would we want to <laughs> and it was it was really funny but yeah i think a big one was just really focusing on the relationships and the environment at club early and getting but just making it approachable for people in general and making it a thing to where people felt comfortable telling their friends hey come to this it's super fun it's not like spike ball it's like yeah just play mm -hmm. ball. and then in the spring we just indoctrinate them and then they're all about it but i love that <laughs> yeah that's so cute yes um i know over in texas ut specifically they have Monday fun day and it's like expected that all of their club members will go. So they'll be like, are you going to Monday fun day? And that's like the perfect opportunity for the members to invite their other friends and stuff like that. I don't know if anyone from UT is here or maybe Noah, but it's like expected that you're going to Monday fun day. You might not have the most competitive games ever because you might be like making new friends who have only played around it a few times before. So Monday fun day, it's a good thing. Sammy, do you have anything? Yeah, just kind of about like recruiting and retaining women in your club. Um, the what we did because we were pretty hard for women coming like the the end of the fall semester, so we did like a discounted rate for women. So instead of like paying like, the full price for competitive or practice, we just did give them a discounted rate just to give them like an incentive to stay and show that we really appreciate them being there. But also like Cade was saying, like that environment was super important to like have a, a nice open welcoming environment so we did a bunch of like pickups on campus that everyone who was walking past us could see that it was just a good time just having a good happy time i love that i love brown it it's so cute um okay great i know for me when i was in college i was the only girl at my campus that was playing pretty much at a competitive level and for some reason i didn't really care about losing all that much which i do now <laughs> but like it might help for you to say like it's okay you know we're we're here to have fun and stuff like that because i know some people can get really competitive <sighs> more competitive than their skill level like allows them to be so that's my little tidbit but for me it was huge that i had people who were really encouraging and we also did a lot of social stuff like we went to dinner after we played in the racquetball courts. That's like a very fond memory in college for me. So as much as you can do social things as well, build, like to build those relationships outside of the competition, that's always a really great thing. Yeah. We hosted a um, clinic with, a women's run at clinic with the twins. They're, we're fortunate they live like two and a half hours away from us. So. Um, we got them to come over and um, Sarah Allen could stop by too and that was really fun and got to do that and we had a lot of players from Georgia and NC State come up and down as well and so that was that was a really fun time and we made kind of a big weekend out of it and had a hat tournament at the end and it was a really cool experience that was something that made t-shirts for it and it was fun that's so cute yeah yeah we really want to have as much competition really um as often as you can so if anyone finds those opportunities like hey you're illinois we're also illinois do we want to like have this happen this weekend like i would love to know about it so that we can send you guys free stuff <laughs> for that um because we would like for that to happen as much as possible like any sort of play competition on your campus or like between two schools you know sectionals is kind of the the bigger step and then college nationals is the, the step after that but if we can encourage competition at the most local level we would like to do that 
Yeah, shout out. I think Colton Olvey's in the meeting, but he's the Georgia guy. And we try to do a scrimmage, Clemson and Georgia, every – we've done it every year, but every we're trying to do it every semester. And that's always super fun because they're like an hour and a half away. And so we drive up or down and make it a big kind of weekend. It's always fun. Absolutely. Hoping to do that this year for sure. Lovely. I'll text you after this. is great. <laughs> UGA is great. Um, I also watched the intro to the college documentary, by the way, for those of you who were at College Nationals or on Network was filming, and the intro made me, like, tear up. So that's something to look forward to. I believe uh, Albert is finishing that up, like, as we speak. Um, and we are finally finalizing the ESPN contract. So I hope you guys are getting really excited for that because yeah, I'm going to cry when it's, when it's actually like showing it's incredible. <laughs> yes. Noah, I love that note. I love the Halloween tournaments. <laughs> yeah. Um, I also run women's round net. So if there's anything that I can do, like, I know it's like somewhat adjacent to my role at Spike Bowl, but is, if there's anything I can do to help, let me know. Uh, I have a lot of women's raw net stickers, temporary tattoos, and like apparel that I still have. So like seriously, let me know and we'll get that to you guys. Um, so yeah, thank you for all that you're doing for the sport. Really, like even if it's just like, oh, we only have guys. Like, ah, that's still round net. That's still playing. So oh, that's good. Um, I don't have anything else for y'all, but um, you guys are good to go. I'm going to have this um, presentation and I can email it to you. Um, but I'll stick around for a little bit if anyone wants to chat about anything. You guys are good to go. Thank you for being here. Okay. Heard Malachi. We'll get that to you. <laughs> Joel, our girls at yes. Nationals this past year love those temporary tattoos. I think Shelby and, Abby, Shelby and Abby put like a combined 14 on between the two of them. It was I love nerdy. that. I don't know Shelby. Shelby. I know Abby. Yeah, Abby, Abby, oh, and Maddie. Maddie wore like six also. Um, okay, we'll have to send you a, a batch for the year, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they they wore those out. That was awesome. Um, but I would love to do a, like a big women's, get women's round involved in like a big clinic again. We had a lot of mm -hmm. good things come out of it last year. And cool. I would love to do another one last year we did it in like late february early march i want to say okay and it was a little cold but it was it was a great time it was great timing wise just because there was wasn't a lot of like the busyness of like football season with college stuff and then the spike mm -hmm. wasn't going on so like we could have people come in that weren't traveling to tournaments and stuff mm -hmm. but yeah i'd love to host a big women's run at clinic at Clemson because okay. we have like last year it was I just marketed it kind of college girls and we had 42 girls come out between that's absurd and Clemson and Georgia like we had okay. 13 girls drive up from Georgia and it was sick um okay let's and so definitely do that future thing yeah. but I'd love to kind of joint kind of do that and we'll make t-shirts for it and um Give those out for free or whatever but i think that'd be cool okay yeah if you see opportunities for spike ball or women's roundup to be involved seriously let me know um of course i would love to have a way where olivia and ally could get paid for it if they're the ones like you know helping out with that um so we can try to find a way yeah and but i think that would be huge 